just thought I'd do a little in focus on this area. And this is a really nice area that I've been <clears throat> making over the last, what, three years. And at the moment, I've still got quite a bit to do, but I'm quite happy with it at this stage. That path has got to have some bricks and some quarry tiles laid onto it yet. And I've not put those down yet. That is an upcoming project that I will do at some point, but I've not achieved that just yet. And that's that's mainly because we've had such hot weather that you really don't want to do that type of work in this weather. So I tend to save that type of work when it cools down a bit. But I'm hoping in the next month, I will do just that and then we can do another another YouTube video on it. It's very windy again today and it's slowed down compared to what it was yesterday anyway. It was terrible yesterday and it's actually damaged quite a few of my plants and bent them over and you've kind of got to just roll with it and accept damages and hope next year will be a little bit better but who knows. Calamagrostis does stand up well to it. It will bend in a heavy rain and almost touch the ground but I can almost guarantee that by the time it dries out, it will bounce back up to this. This look here, and that's wonderful. That's a wonderful look. So the other bits I've got in this area, this here, this is a sheep bale feeder. And usually you see cows feeding out of these, but they, they're a lot bigger of a ring. I've got three of these up at grassy bottom. And in this one, I've got Persicaria polymorpha which does, it doesn't need to be contained in there, but it does look really good. And Persicaria polymorpha is a clump former. And it's, it's about the size I'd expect it to make. Well, maybe a foot shorter. I'd expect it to get to at least six foot, but this year has been an exceptionally dry year, apart from the wet spring we had. And as a result, it slowed some things down. I'm still playing with different plants in this area and I like to do this all the time I like to mess about with different plant combinations as you know I'm a grass fan so I've got quite a few grasses in here that are all looking good and we've also got these which is an allium and it's allium summer drummer and I have to say despite everything else being a little shorter than I expected this year the, the alliums in particular have excelled themselves. This particular clump here, they are seven foot up in the air now. They're looking really good. They're just about, let's unravel this one. They're just about to unfurl as well, as you can see from that one. So they have the typical allium flower, but they're really, really nice because they had a lot of interest for a long time as they're growing. Now these have remained unscathed in all that wind, so there's not one of them I've found snapped, where I've, as I've got other alliums further up the garden, which is Globemaster, which <clears throat> I had five in one clump and every one of them have snapped and gone over. So it's a bit of a nightmare at times. This is a, a Veronicastrum virginicum, and this one's called Pointed Finger and that's the effect it has so it looks pretty much like a pointed finger now it's tiny at the moment it was only put in this year and to be quite honest i should remove that flower but i quite like the look of it so i'm going to leave it alone it is tiny it will make a five foot tall clump in the coming years next year should be a lot taller than this year and, and year on year it will produce a bigger clump so it's gonna look really good the grass behind it, that's one of my favourite Deschampsias, and that's Deschampsia sespitosa gold tau. The reason I like this one in particular is because it has a bit of a longevity on its seeding, so it lasts quite a long time. It's a little bit later than some of them, but it lasts longer than most of them. So the seed heads become very, very star-like star-like that's not really the word is it but very very sparkly and they look great in this sort of weather so it's not finished growing yet that's going to get at least another foot at least another foot taller than they are at the moment 
as you can see behind we've got more more alliums summer drummer i love it i've got so many planted in this area so i i try and add interest to some little borders and this border here i've got this which i'm sure would have been used as a water vessel turn the other way up obviously the reason i'm not using it as a water vessel is because it, it's got holes all over it so it leaks so i used it to put these stone doves on and it's just put in the garden like this so it's kind of a it kind of draws the eye and it adds interest to the border and that's something i'm always trying to do We've got a Miscanthus here that's not massive yet. This is one of the best. It's called Miscanthus sinensis malapartus. Shouldn't really be showing them at this time of year because they're not flowering at all. But when they flower again, I'll do a full video on, on the Miscanthus. This tree's doing well now, and this is Fagus sylvatica Dowit gold. There is also a Dowit purple you can get. And this is finally starting to show some of that gold colour on top. As it gets older, I expect it to be more yellow throughout throughout the leaves, but it's really nice. So it's a beach. It's a it's a slim, upright beach that should only get to, I should say, a maximum of four to five feet in width, and then it'll go up, up in the air to about 15, 20 feet. So that's a really nice one. And the other bits I've got here, well, this is an old, um, what is it, a millstone. It's an old millstone, that. And, well, that's just part of a millstone. And for now, I've got it here just really for the hell of it. But it does look nice. So this is the cloister pergola, as you know. So this is the back end of the cloister pergola that you don't always get to see. And I've got the reinforcing mesh. And then the wood behind it is put to sort of like distract your eye when the, the other side of it. So when you're sitting in there, you feel a little bit more secluded. And over time, the roses will grow up and they will cover all of this. I've got two roses in this area. That one there, that's simply a climber. And then this one is a rambler. It's described as a climber, but it's actually, a, I know it as a rambler. And it's called Madame Alfred Carrier. No flowers on it yet. You can see from the picture there the type of flowers it will have. And it should be quite nice. The reason I want to ramble is because I've got a lot of climbing to do on this, this actual pergola. And it's got to cover all this section. So over time, it'll do that. I call this... The polo, it's a window, a reclaimed window, and I really like this. So when the roses get going, I'm going to have to trim around it and keep that view because we get a lovely view both sides. So if I'm in the cloister pergola looking back out this way, it's great. And when I'm looking this way, we get another view, an unexpected view. And it kind of focuses you on what's going on. It's quite nice. And I've got, this is a cow drinker. And it's, it's no good as a cow drinker anymore because, it, again, it's full of holes. So I managed to rescue that and I've used it as a planter. And I've got two of those. There's actually one also inside the cloister pergola itself, if you can make that out through there. That's another one. And I like to use them as planters. In this particular one, I've got a Strantia Muriel's Gift looking really good it's gone through the best of its flowering but still looks okay so that's quite a nice flower and it's a lovely elfy clump the leaves are lovely which seems to keep going for ages we've got a couple of hackanacloas that's aureola and then hackanacloa samurai behind it then a couple of Osters. One is called Bookshaw Blue. The other one, I do not know. I've lost the label. They're looking nice, though. And then the metal section there. That's reclaimed as well. I just simply use it as a little backdrop for that. I had no other use for it. Couldn't find nothing to do with it. So I thought it would look nice there, and it does. It's looking really nice. And the intention is that the Eupatorium, which is behind it, which is called Gluck Ball. So that's Eupatorium Gluck Ball. 
really really nice it gets to about five foot and then it has a lovely scent which a lot of people don't realize this does now it is starting to set flowers albeit very very tiny things eventually they will get bigger and they will be very very nice indeed and then we've got allium sephirocephalon the drumstick allium that's just opening up now and very soon we should see lots of color coming from that and then if you remember last year we had a big clump of grass here called memory miscanthus sinensis memory again it's the wrong time to show you them but that will be a bit of a star of this border as it gets going. And I like it so much, I put another clump there. A clump here, that's a panicum. That particular one in front of it. They both look actually pretty much the same, but they're not. This is a panicum and that's a miscanthus. And the difference will be obvious once they actually get, get seeding. And that one's Panicum Thundercloud. I've got all the plants in here. We've got this Monada. And that's West Acre Purple. Again, it's not flowering yet, so it's a little bit soon to be showing you it. But I'm trying to focus in on this area, just to give you the feeling of what, what I do and what I plant, and how quickly plants can make that difference. But I like to put things like this. So as you know, this is the floating deck. It looks real. It does look really nice. I must say, every time I come out here and look at this floating deck from here, it sort of takes it takes my breath. It's really nice. I like that a lot. Got more Eupatoriums here. Again, it's glut ball. It's easy to split. So if you're going to split it, do it in. When did I do that one? I did that early spring. So when you first start seeing the growth on these is the, is the best time. I did it a little bit before that, but nevertheless, it's doing quite well. And they've all come from one little clump. Or one big clump, really. And they are clumper. So over time, they'll just get bigger and bigger, a bigger clump. But they'll get about five foot maximum, that particular one. And as I said, it has a lovely scent. Hence me putting it here. So that's really nice. Now that's a whip carved EB in there that you see there. And I call that Bob Marley for obvious reasons. I think some of us like to give some plants a little bit of a character full name. And I call that Bob Marley because of the hair, like look there it's got now and it's lovely. I love whip cord EBs. We've got a bamboo here. This is Asian Wonder or Phygesia knitted her. Asian Wonder, it goes under a couple of names. That being one of them, and the other one being Winter Joy. So, again, this is the Black Elder, the ones I took cuttings from, and this is a, by far the best of the. Well, I've only got three of them here now, I gave one away, but this is the best of the three that I've got here, and that's now two and a half foot tall, it's doing really, really well. It's so easy to take cuttings from. And I've got three of those in the garden. And as you know, the one behind there, the big one, that's the parent plant. We've got lots of other plants I'm going to be messing about with over time in here. I am playing with different things. This this is a Bressingham uh, a hybrid, and it's Echinacea, and they are Bressingham hybrids. That's what they're called. They come up with different sort of tones of pinks and purples, and sometimes they can develop whites. So it's always a bit of a surprise when you get the seedlings as to what colour they're going to be. And it's always better to plant as many as you can. Don't just plant one or two, plant quite a few together. And I've got all those from one plant that I bought originally. One of my favourite echinaceas is actually this one, and this is called Pallida. Now, Pallida is a very pink form, and this is just coming out. So it's quite a good face to show you, but it's quite a light pink form of echinacea, and it's the species type. So those petals will reflex back, and they'll droop. Now, the one thing about this one, I got this one up at East, Scamps, um, East Scamp, Scampston Hall. Sorry, I got them from there, and... What this one does, I picked it out of a, off of a bench, knowing that the great Pete Udolf had designed and planted this up. 
I knew this was going to be something special because when I saw it on the bench, it was really deep pink, which it stood out a mile from all the others. And I took it home and I, uh, I was a bit disappointed because the next year it came up pink, the usual pink. But then over the next month and a half, it gradually turned deeper and deeper pink, which it, it does on a yearly basis now. So this is the third year in now, so this is a good tester. So these will, over time, go a more dark cerise pink colour from that light colour. Hard to believe because they normally go the other way. They normally start dark and go lighter, but not in that case. So that's really nice. Now, this is a, a steeper, and this one's... This is steeper gigantia. So it's the Spanish oats, as a lot of people call it. And there's a baby at the minute, selected seedling, just a seedling, nothing special about this one. I just grew a load of, a load of plants from seeds and then just, his ba well, basically it's the only one I've got left. The other ones I've disposed of. And then next year, that's going to be very, a very nice plant indeed. We've also got this in here. And that's Taxus Bacata standishii. If you like the look of that, it's a very slow grower. So if you're looking for something that gets big quick, don't bother getting that one. But it's a very nice form to have. I've got two in this in this garden or in this border. And here's the second one. So they're really nice. Really like those. I like to see those in. I've had them in every garden I've had, to be honest with you. Because they give you this permanence. So I think we'll end with this, and this is Nifophia, and this is called Rich Echoes, and it is a really, really nice, nice Fophia. Very small, or smaller, a smaller variety, don't get very tall, but very nice next to my grasses. So that's just a little focus in on this area here. To the right is the long border. And then to the left, that's the Carl Forster border. Just a small little area, but it packs a big punch. I'll touch you on the next one. Ta-da!